You guys like my cloak? I got this at a renaissance fair um, at the end of June and it's got these pretty little handmade clasps with crystals and a nice big hood and I feel like an elf or maybe like Eowyn or Arwen or somebody from Lord of the Rings. <laughs> hey guys, Naomi here. I am back today with a video that I'm really excited about but I'm not quite sure what I'm calling it. I'm sharing a bunch of big books that are great for fairy tale lovers, for if you're just obsessed with fairies and fantasy and artists like Brian Froud and Alan Lee and um, yeah I'm not sure what to call this video because not all of these books are illustrated, some have photography in them, but just magical coffee table type books for fairy tale lovers. Yeah. First up is obviously a lot of you probably know about this book. It's been around for a long time. This is Fairies, and I have the poster up in most of my videos. Um, the poster was actually in the back of this book. This was the Deluxe Collector's Edition, I think for the 25th anniversary, um, perhaps, I think this was the 25th year anniversary. And it also came with some beautiful prints in the back, which I haven't framed yet, but I really want to. And this, growing up, I had the old edition uh, that my mom had in our library at home, and I, I just used to always look through it as a little girl and I just fell in love with the illustrations and if you're not familiar with this book then you should definitely go out and look it up it has some of my favorite um, pictures of all time of fairies in here it has all the different pictures by um, Brian Froud and Alan Lee I think both yeah illustrated this book and some of my favorite flower fairies are in here and just an amazing thing to get your inspiration going and um, I don't really even know what to say about this book. It's one of my favorite books in the world. <laughs> That's what I'll say about it. So number one, if you are looking for any type of fairy book or if you're shopping for a gift for someone who loves fairies and they don't have this yet, then they need this in their life. Okay, second up from this section of my bookshelf is Good Fairies, Bad Fairies. <laughs> it's one of those flip around type books. So the good fairies and this is just um, Brian Froud's illustrations and This book has like I said on the first half illustrations and descriptions of good fairies and then in the other section is bad fairies and all sorts of crazy looking creatures in this book. I just love these so much and some of his sketches and another one if you're a fan of his work then I would highly recommend this book. This was just sent to me and I feel so excited and um, lucky to have received this because this isn't even out yet. <laughs> this is the newest Brian Froud creation um, from Brian and Wendy Froud. Actually his wife also is an amazing um, artist and I think she actually did Yoda like helped create Yoda which is just crazy but she does these amazing 3d um, sculptures of what is happening to this crown yeah this comes out September 27th and this is the press fairy journal of Madeline Cottington and I feel like I should speak in a British accent when I'm speaking about this book I don't know why and um, I don't know, I just feel like speaking in a British accent, or I don't really know if that's British, but something European. Brian and Wendy Froud um, bring readers back into their world of best-selling books about the Cottingtons and the fairies. If you're familiar with the Cottington fairy photos, then you'll know what I'm talking about. And if you don't know, then look that up, it's really interesting. Uh, and it just says, within these pages, the backstory of Cottington Hall and its intriguing inhabitants. The family of Cottingtons and the fairies living among them comes to life. And it's kind of in a journal style, as it says. And it's really cool. It combines all these different journal entries. Um, and I have not read this yet. I had just received this in the mail not too long ago. And I'm so excited to start reading it. I flipped through it. Um, but that's about it. And it has some like handwritten type stuff, some are typed, all sorts of things. And the cool part about this is that some of them really do look like they're just pressed right in the book. 
And in the back, there's some secret little envelopes, which I'm not going to tell you what's inside. You're just going to have to go out and get it. This is from Abrams Press. They have a lot of amazing, uh, fantastical books like this. Abrams also kindly sent me uh, Brian Froud's Fairies Tales. And this is a huge book. Get back here so you can see it better. And um, it was so nice of them to send this to me. This one is already out. I think this was out in 2014. And um, this is just such a huge, beautiful coffee table book. And again, this is by Brian and Wendy Froud actually collaborated together on this. And this one's really neat because it not only combines his illustrations, but let's see if I can find a page where it shows some of her work also. Um, okay, so, oops, cover's falling off here. But if you can see there, that's actually not an illustration, but like an image of one of her 3D creations. And so, so cool. It's, oh, I didn't even see that yet. The actual cover has a gorgeous image on it also. Let's see what the back cover has on it. Yep, another one. <laughs> so I still have to read this too, but this is going to be some great fall reading that I can just curl up with a cup of tea and immerse myself in these fairy tale worlds. This one is actually told from the point of view of many different kinds of fairies. So yeah, that should be really interesting. Ooh, that cloak got too hot. Anyway. Next, we have the Lord of the Rings sketchbook. These next two books, they're for Lord of the Rings fans. Like, if, if you are like me and, you know, tried to learn Elvish and write Elvish when you were in high school, I did that, <laughs> then you will appreciate these books. Um, this one is Sketches by Alan Lee, who did so much of the work behind the scenes for the movies. And um, these are all his sketches, not all his sketches, but a lot of sketches. Uh, and he has such a beautiful uh, style, really light sketching. And these are so intricate and beautiful. And you can really see where he started to develop ideas for how things would look in the movies. Um, some maps and stuff in here too. If you're a fan of his work and you don't have this book, you should definitely take a look at it. And if you're a fan of The Lord of the Rings and just love learning about, you know, behind the scenes of the sets and um, it's a wonderful book for that. And I didn't know that Alan Lee is so visual of an artist that he didn't, he couldn't even write down lists. It didn't work for him. So when they were in brainstorm sessions, you know, meetings with all the other craftspeople and things who were making um, props for the films, he would actually sketch the list of what he was thinking about of all the different props and how they needed to be made and things. And so there's sketches from that in here too. Uh, just so intriguing to get behind that creative process and uh, this is a little lens into a very great artistic mind. Next is another Lord of the Rings book, uh, The Art of the Lord of the Rings by J.R.R. Tolkien. So this is actually some behind the scenes for fans of the books and just Tolkien in general. This is a lot of sketching and um, notes and maps, just all behind the scenes of how Tolkien created Middle-earth. It's phenomenal and um, you can see here, some of it I can't even read his writing, but they explain what's in each one when he's developing ideas for Here's um, developing an idea for Orthanc and maps, like mapping out Middle Earth. Here's him sketching in runes and oh, I love this, this one, the gateway, sketching the, those beautiful um, trees around the gateway. And I just think it's so cool um, to see all of these behind the scenes, especially as a writer of fantasy, which I am, have been slowly working on. Um, some stuff of my own and find it just so fascinating to um, see how someone created one of my favorite worlds ever. So another gorgeous book and these ones are by Houghton Mifflin Harcourt. The next book is so heavy. <laughs> this and forgive the shine. Um, I had to cover this with um, like a covering on my own after I got it because it was just I wanted to protect it. This is a really expensive book. A first edition of Wonderland by um, 
Kirsty Mitchell. And some of you might have seen this going around on Kickstarter, the project for this last year. And if you missed out on one of these, you're in luck because they have announced just like a week or two ago that they're going to do a second printing. So a second edition is coming out, I think with like a slightly different cover. And um, this is one of those splurges that I made like last year on Christmas. This cost me like $180. It's probably the most, it is the most expensive book that I own. But I felt that as a lover of fantasy and just magical things that I had to have this in my life. So if you are not familiar with her work, you should look it up online, but I'll try to show you some, prop it on my shoulder here. Um, this is her photography. This is a huge long project that she did. And it is just filled with amazing images that just, I mean, she created like all the props and everything. For and some of these are fold outs. Ah. So I, I'm, I can't hold all this up. <laughs> also has, oh, I love this one too. There's, I wish I could show you all the images in here. You'll get much better images if you go to her website and, um, or buy the second edition of the book that's coming out. I think you can pre-order it right now. And it's probably gonna be a similar price again. Uh, it comes from the UK. Um, the whole, oh, this is one of my absolute favorites. Can you guys see that? Isn't that cool? And the whole section back here is behind the scenes of how they did stuff. And that's really amazing too. So I'm gonna put this heavy book down but I will leave all the links below for how to how you can find the second edition of this. And I just have one more from this section of my shelf. I keep this there too. This, look at this gorgeous cover. You guys see the um, beautiful like foiled, it's almost washing it out with the light. But this is called Mr. Finch Living in a Fairy Tale World. Oh, you can see better over here. And this is just the gorgeous work of Mr. Finch, this guy takes scraps and old fabrics and he makes beautiful creatures out of them. Some of them you might think are kind of morbid, like dead birds and stuff. <laughs> but I love the insects especially. And this is just such a cool, some views into his artist studio here. He makes a bunch of rabbits and things too. And I love this book. If you are interested in kind of unique crafts that are, here's a cat in his studio, it's so cute. This is just, one of a kind, folks. This is, he makes mushrooms that sort of have like their own personality. And um, here's some spiders with spoons on the back. The moths are probably my favorite. They're so cool. So very weird and quirky, but fantastic. And just a great, ugh, I don't know, I love it. So those are the books from my kind of big coffee table fantasy section of my bookshelf. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and let me know if you have any of these books and what you think of them or if you want any of these books or any books like this that you have that I didn't talk about and you want to mention. And uh, yeah, I would love to discuss books like this in the comments down below. And uh, you can say hi to Luke here. <laughs> I hope you guys have a great day and I will talk to you very soon.